Good morning. My name is Chris Ndukumana. I'm the host of the Kanuka broadcast. You're about to listen to today's broadcast translated from French to English. Be blessed. Today's Wednesday. The world we live in is complicated. It's filled with challenges that can easily discourage anyone. There are many traps laid by the enemy, and they aren't always easy to spot. But those who are spiritually awake understand that if they begin each day with the Lord, they will find victory, no matter what happens. People often feel defeated or downcast because they're facing these struggles alone. However, when you're with God, and you've prayed, even if something doesn't go as planned or you face a setback, you know it's not because you didn't pray, it's because God, in His wisdom, has allowed it for a reason, and He's there with you through it. There's a difference between someone who fails without having prayed or been close to God and someone who, after praying, faces a setback while remaining with God. The first person will often feel lost, wondering, why does this keep happening to me? But the second person, having prayed, will find comfort in the Lord. This is why it's so important to pray and prepare your day. With faith and the assurance that you've entrusted your day to God, you can go about it with confidence, knowing He's in control. Today's Bible passage is from Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 11 says, The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your soul in drought, and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. Each morning, ask God to be your guide. Entrust Him with your day and everything that will come with it. After you've placed your day in His hands, He will satisfy your soul in drought, in those dry places where things feel difficult or unyielding. Whether it's at work, in relationships, or life in general, even when things seem stagnant, He will bring satisfaction to your soul. The verse goes on, saying He will strengthen your bones. You may lose strength at times, whether through illness, fatigue, or discouragement, but God will restore you physically too, giving you the strength you need to carry out your tasks. This promise isn't just about spiritual matters, God also cares about your physical well-being and He will give you the energy and vitality you need. Then, you'll become like a watered garden. Even if you're facing discouragement or if your heart feels dry, He will shower you with peace, joy, and hope, making you like a spring that never runs dry. A spring that doesn't dry up means you'll be abundant, lacking nothing. When one door closes, another will open because you're no longer controlling your day, God is. Many people experience depression and suffer because they try to control everything. They pour themselves out, and when things don't go as they planned, they end up discouraged, disappointed, and even angry. But you'll find peace when you stop trying to control everything and let God take the lead. If something works out, it's because He allowed it. And if it doesn't, don't dwell on it, give thanks to God, knowing you've prayed and placed it all in His hands. It's now time to continue the teaching called, The Business of Prophecies and Miracles. I started this teaching on Monday. I am pointing out how people today are demanding money in exchange for using the spiritual gifts God has given them. They're using these gifts with the expectation of payment, meaning someone won't prophesy or pray for you unless you've paid them first. When the condition for ministry is payment, it becomes a commercial transaction. Now, let me clarify, if someone prays for you or uses a gift to bless you, and you feel led by the Holy Spirit to bless them back, there's nothing in God's word against that. What I'm addressing is when money is a precondition to access a spiritual gift. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, we're reminded that spiritual gifts are free, freely you have received, freely give. It's wrong to turn spiritual gifts into a way to make money. Gifts are meant to open doors and bless people without conditions. Someone might want to bless you because of a gift you have, but don't demand money to use that gift. Exercise it, even if no one gives you anything in return, because you're doing it for the Lord. And the Lord, who gave you the gift, knows how to bless you. If, for example, you're selling clothing or computer products, you can't just give those away, because they cost money to produce. But when it comes to a gift, you didn't buy it. God gave it to you, and the one who gave it requires that you share it freely. So why demand money when the one who owns the gift asks you to share it without payment? Today, I also want to talk about the gift of singing, because many Christians with this gift expect to be paid before they'll sing. That's what usually happens in conferences or crusades. Some say, I can't come sing unless you pay me, and negotiations begin. If they're not happy with the amount, they won't come. They fail to realize they're negotiating over a gift they received freely, even though the true owner of that gift asks them to share it freely. That's why I love to see Christian concerts that are open to all without charge. But I also want to speak to the Christians who attend these events. You need to go to those Christian concerts with a transformed mindset. You know I talk a lot about changing our mindset. Don't go just to receive. It's wonderful to receive and be blessed, 
but if you're mature spiritually, think also about giving. Concerts involve costs for sound, venues, hotels, flights, all of it adds up. If you understand this, and you go and see someone using their gift of singing, a gift which you don't have, then you should think about contributing. An immature believer only looks to receive, but a spiritually mature believer gives. Let's pray for spiritual growth. Don't attend gatherings only to receive, give something as well. A mature believer doesn't just receive, they give. The worship leader is sharing their gift of song with you, but you have something you can contribute to support the event. We are all part of the body of Christ, we are meant to function together. To those with spiritual gifts, whether prophecy, healing, or singing, don't require payment. Give freely because it's the command of Jesus. It's not even a suggestion, it's an order. Now, let's look at the story of Simon the Magician in Acts chapter 8. Simon was a magician who charged money for everything he did because magicians don't perform for free. If you've ever met a magician, they don't do anything without getting paid. So, Simon's mentality was all about making money with his tricks, but when he saw Peter and John, filled with the Holy Spirit, praying for people, he knew miracles were happening. He'd heard of their miracles, including when Peter and John healed a man born lame, as seen in Acts chapter 3. Simon wanted to buy this power, he wanted to purchase God's gift. Acts chapter 8, verse 18 to 19 shows how he offered money to acquire the ability to impart the Holy Spirit. Simon was ignorant, he didn't know better. But Peter was angry and he responded in verse 20, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Poor Simon didn't understand why Peter was so upset, he still had a business mentality. Just as today, there are servants of God still trapped in this mentality. But the gift of God is not for sale. I'll continue discussing this tomorrow. May I am bless you. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.